Alright, so this is a video from a year ago. I'm gonna play it. Hopefully it'll pick up. You'll be staring at my ceiling for about 30 minutes. Sorry. I literally lost every friend that I thought I had when I hurt my back. It's, uh... That's when people became just words. Just words on Facebook. We got a tank back here. It's uh, helium. It didn't work too good. Rig this thing up to uh, this here face mask. I still woke up. Uh, I spent a lot of years believing that uh, I could be the change that I wanted to see in the world. I could be the hero I didn't have as a kid. I could be the person who spoke out and defended these people. I did a really good job, actually. I did a good job of passing out blankets. I don't want to be here anymore. I don't want to be here for your pretty fucking words. Now let's say... Let's say none of these people had ever threatened me. Let's say the police had never assaulted me and... Let's say that I hadn't been injected with ketamine and Haldol and Ativand. Let's pretend all that shit didn't happen. Let's pretend that the only thing that happened was Natalie being scared. That would be enough for me to wish for death. Being painted as a boogeyman and knowing that all these people who did these things got away with it. Well. My fears don't matter because I'm a male. None of the things Natalie was afraid of me doing. None of them actually happened. Actually, that's, that's not true. They did happen. I'm just not the perpetrator who did them. I want suicide to be legal. I don't own a firearm. I got access to propane tanks, and uh, well, that leaves a mess. Firearms, that leaves a mess. That helium tank, it's not gonna leave a mess, but it's not gonna kill me either, obviously. I'm still here. Tonight an officer showed up. I'd say I got about a four hour nap in. That that's the full extent of this suicide attempt. How can I be happy knowing that people think I'm the boogeyman?
How can I be happy when every person that I cared about threw me away? Familiarity is important. I always wanted a family. I always wanted kids. I was never really into the idea of marriage. I don't like the idea of another person as a possession. People who uh, stole from me and ripped me off throughout my life, they absolved themselves of their own personal sins. I embrace mine. I don't see a reason to hide. Not from the truth, anyway. I didn't just get bad legal advice. I got... Well... We could do a little comparison here of pictures. Do you have somebody who's uh, physically attractive is treated for someone who's not? Chelsea, she uh, used to want me to go to Boulder to see her. I do want to go see her. She was uh, going to go with me to... You see why I was afraid of Natalie's opinion? Just an opinion. Natalie didn't have that opinion to begin with. It was shoved onto her. Sean was this kind of person. Sean was that kind of person. I can't believe you brought one of those people to our house. My birthday when uh, Natalie told me her mom found her heroin. Her sister didn't bat an eye. One little white lie. That's why opinions are so important. It's important to get an education. We're used for making money for rich people. People who are already rich. Laws are made to protect the rich to protect their investments, to protect their money. That's why there's no audio in those uh, mental institutions. That's why the police get to turn off their body cams whenever they want. These people are protected by uh, an institution. Uh, the, the biggest joke of all is uh, trying to pretend that a capitalist society is dem democratic at all. There's nothing democratic about a capitalist society. You really think the people are voting to make the rich richer? Six months ago when it made a difference. People were busy destroying evidence. They were busy destroying my voice, destroying my ability to speak out. When I came out of that courtroom, I didn't know shit about Natalie's disappearance. That reporter wasn't interested in what happened to me. 
she was interested in what happened to that pretty little girl. She was an adult. She's allowed to have friends. Even if they're older than her. I am her dad's age. I was born October 18th, 1980 in Scotts Bluff, Nebraska. To Brian David Schwartz and Angela K. Broom. I didn't go into the system uh, to 13. I went into the system at the age of four. I got to see my parents a little bit on visitations. We had to go to Wyoming to visit my dad in prison. Well, I was pretty well institutionalized by the time I got dropped off in Nebraska at 15. I, I'd lived other places. I mean, I lived with my dad for about six months in California. And uh, up in Washington State, I was mostly locked up. They had me on a lot of medications. And those medications messed my head up. A lot. So when I got off of the medications, I, I decided I was going to stay off of them. I stayed away from heroin. I stayed away from cocaine. I tried meth. I didn't like it. Matter of fact, uh, I was living underneath uh, Matt Worley's bed. Over at the hotel here in Chapel, Nebraska. That was my meth days, you know. I wanted my friends back. It was worth it to do those drugs to have my friends back. Except I didn't get my friends back. I had to leave. I had to get away from those people. I still love Matt Worley. I still love Case Morris. I still love Eva. All these people are parents now. I was never accepted by my family. No matter what. It, I was too nice. It took me 20 years to scream at my mom. 20 years. I didn't scream at Jamie until last year. Now, when I said that, uh, James Payton was a rapist, that's what Jamie stopped being my friend over. That's what she stopped talking to me over. You don't accuse a man of being a rapist if he didn't rape you. Now, it's when people want to do this on your behalf that you really screwed up. And it's up to you to set it straight. Now, I, I never asked the woman uh, who... James was supposedly to have raped if he actually did that. I just took uh, Jamie's word for it. That's the messed up thing there is that uh, what made me crazy in 2008 was that uh, James was a series of horror stories. James Payton Jamie told me that he uh, had done a, a whole bunch of mean stuff, including uh, raping Jackie McKenzie. Which uh, apparently was bullshit. But also, 
you look at the, the series of events that happened that uh, led up to that scenario, Jamie's mother had died. She just had a, a baby boy. She lost her mom. What Rose did the day that Natalie ended up missing I think that's something any mom would do. Any mom would be that angry. Did James Payton uh, rape Jackie McKenzie? I don't think so. I think uh, James Payton deserved his day in court. I also believe that uh, it's not my day in court and it's up to the victims to come forward. But then again, I came forward and I got treated like I was crying wolf. Did James rape me? Hell no. <laughs> he ain't big enough. He is pretty fucking big though. Did he womp up on Jamie? Oh, yeah. That bruise covered almost the entire backside of her body. Now, Todd Rust, I saw him today. Saw him a couple of times since I've been to town. He keeps reminding me that I... Uh, I walk the walk more than most. One little white lie can ruin a man's life. One little white lie can have people doing such terrible things to a man that he doesn't want to live. But also, the prettier you are, the, the more likely people are to do mean shit. I know women who are raped that, well, they weren't the pretty ones, so nobody listened. Or they didn't fit society's ideals of perfection, but the person who raped them did, so it was okay. When Jamie told me that James had raped Jackie, that was way back in 2008, after her mother had died. And thinking back on it, she told a lot of little white lies back then. There was a guy named Hayden McCall. She used to tell people that me and Hayden made out. No, me and Hayden never made out. I've never been into dudes. For a while there, I, I thought I must be gay because uh, women don't like me. Yeah, you can't make yourself gay if you're not gay. So, uh, we live in a world where a man is supposed to not have emotions, not show emotion. And we got specific criteria where it's all right and only specific emotions. He's allowed to show aggression, yes. A man is allowed to show aggression. Based on what? You threaten a man's family, he's allowed to show aggression. So, if a man wants to show aggression, all he's got to do is pretend like you threatened his family. For, uh, males, we're 
taught about the age of 14 or 15, we're not allowed to have emotions. Our emotions are wrong. We have the same emotions that a woman has, the same exact emotions that a woman has, but we're not allowed to have. We're allowed to show aggression. We're allowed to twist stuff completely out of con context. The things that happen to me happen to me because society teaches us that men and women are different. Boys and girls are different. Man is physically equipped to handle this. A man is not physically equipped to handle psychological warfare or emotional warfare. We teach women how to do this. We don't teach men. The things that uh, Jamie did that were so wrong. These are also things that I believe that young women should learn. Is that messed up or what? We live in a society where people get away with stuff based on looks. That's not just women, it's also men. Gender does play a part. Women can get away with being physically violent a lot more than a man can. There's also the don't ask, don't tell. Victims in America are taught that they're not victims. They're the perpetrators. That's just not the case. I, I was victimized for over a year over Maddie lying. Of course, that's telephone, you know? I mean, she tells one dude that I, I stalked Natalie. Then he goes and tells the next dude that I was stalking some little girl. And then that guy goes and tells the next guy that I was creeping on some little girl. He goes and tells the next guy that I molested some little girl. Might as well be a rapist. Except I didn't molest anybody and I didn't rape anybody. But I sure took the blame for it. I took a whole lot of abuse for it. Now that, that rumor and that lie, I'm still being punished and harassed for. Tim Beeson called me a child molester and a meth head. Natalie actually had uh, texted me that I was a meth head. People who have uh, families, who have good starts, they tend to want to believe that they did it all themselves or they earned it. You didn't earn it any more than somebody who didn't have a family and a fresh start and a decent start. Right now, for, for the first time in my life, I have a decent running vehicle. It's not pretty. But also, for the first time in my life, everything that I had, that I busted my butt for, it's worthless now. Those tools are sitting in people's garages all over the place. Those tools were for making a safe place for people like me, people like Natalie like Alicia, people like Maddie. One little white lie. It's not always enough to ruin a man's life, but it depends on who it comes from. Natalie was on a lot of medications. She was in a lot of pain in Virginia. A lot of pain. 
and I forgive her for that. Am I afforded that same forgiveness, though? I don't need the forgiveness of a bunch of web sleuths. These people slandered my name. I didn't have to slander anybody's. They did it for themselves. There's a... There's really nobody I want to see anymore. I hadn't talked to Josh Hughes since I hurt my back. He called me today. Reminded me, uh, we used to play War Thunder together in Pirates of the Burning Sea. I, I don't want to see any of these people. I don't want to see anyone in Chapel, Nebraska. I'm ashamed of them all. I didn't choose the family that I got. Natalie didn't choose the family that she got, but she got good people in her family. People who were looking out for her. Medications don't fix this. When uh, the Boulder Police Department wouldn't leave me alone, well, that pretty much started as soon as I got to Boulder. Officer Steinman and Officer French, those were uh, the two worst. Officer Amos was always good to me. For being honest, I was punished non-stop. I screamed out on Facebook because I needed help in person, but the longer, the longer it went, the more it didn't matter. I don't even know if I said anything important through this whole damn thing. I don't know if I said anything that's going to register to anybody. Yeah, I, I, I didn't have friends before Christmas. I, I had acquaintances. People pretended like the things happening to me didn't happen. Like I wanted chose or deserved them. They do the same thing to rape victims. I literally don't want to be here. I can't obviously bring myself to tell myself in a, a nasty fashion. I can't, can't blow my own head off. I tried once. I didn't do a very good job, did I? Tried hanging myself once. Tried standing in front of a train once. A life alone is not worth living. And those token pretty words from long distance, they, they don't put a person here when it matters. All right, so that's the video. That was from last year. Apparently a year ago today. 
See, that's the thing. I've been documenting it on Facebook. <clears throat> Telling the truth on Facebook. Because the police wouldn't take my report. 